and Loft Manager Richards from the Pioneer Racing Pigeon Club of Ontario. Welcome. Pioneer live stream. Ask your Loft Managers your questions. Go ahead, Ryan. If you don't know it, we may not know it. I know I probably won't know it. He won't know it. No, we're joking. We're going to help we're going to help you with all your questions. If you have questions, uh, and don't be shy. It can be a silly question. I want to uh, invite everybody, you know, YouTube, Facebook, Facebook, YouTube, come together, share the page, like the page. And what do I mean by share? Share it every, to everything you have. Just share it because you never know. You never know who you're going to open their minds to. Interesting, fun story just before I let Ricky talk. Nick Scar, he goes to school. He loves pigeons. He was telling his teacher or his principal about pigeon racing. His principal or teacher, I, I, I may have missed a point here, had pigeons 30 years ago. Now, interested. That's called a share. You share it outside the box. Not to the pigeon world. Share it outside the box. And watch what happens. You're going to get more and more interest in a really fun, great family, safe hobby, <coughs> pigeon racing. You know what, I, uh, I'm going to say something that uh, the principal or the teacher or his acquaintance mm -hmm. had pigeons 30 years ago or 40 years ago. And probably when he got out of pigeons at that time, slowly uh, it goes away, kind of. But then now, this fella here, uh, what's his Nick. name? Nick. Nick, by accident spark this man and he feels this man will feel that feeling that he had with the pigeons and uh, keeping pigeons uh, in, in an everyday atmosphere for a pigeon keeper every single day he goes back to feeling that childhood feeling that good feeling to watch the birds, to relax. It gives him that feeling, even though some people, they may think, no, that's, I'm past that stage. No, you're never past that stage. Um, uh, even when you watch pigeons in a park or flying, you get that feeling in your body and that's such a good feeling. And if you could feel that for 10 or 15 minutes, minimum every day, it's so good hey, for your body. Can I ask you a question? Do you remember when you were a kid and you played right. soccer? You liked soccer. Yeah. Do you remember when you scored a goal? What was the first thing you always did when you scored? You cheered, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, last night mm -hmm. I was watching hockey with a couple grown men. Right. Watching. Nobody had any money bet on anything. And the team scored. Do you know, two of the guys were rooting for that team. The puck went in and they cheered, right? What were they doing again? Going back to being a kid, to cheering. And, and what Nick did was Nick rubbed that lamp, the magic lamp. And the man or the woman went back and remembered when, boy, that is fun, isn't it? And uh, if, I can just, if I can add to that, uh, Mandy is in the house and said that the principal is coming over after COVID restrictions are lifted to see Mikey's classic loft. Look at that. Do you see? Nice. And, and this is what we're saying. And you know what? That's the best share. That's a super share. And this is what we're saying. Richard, we got a guy, Tony Mufasa. We call her, uh, you know, Carla. Tony, yeah. Right? He has tumblers. <laughs> you know what? You shared to him. He was buying stuff for his tumblers. You shared racing pigeons to him. He now has birds in the Pioneer. He's enjoying it. He shared it with his wife. She's enjoying it. Can you see? Can you see the mm -hmm. the growth? There was years ago. There was a show, uh, Walt Disney. Right. Had every Sunday night. They had like a production on the Wonderful Walt World Disney, of Disney. Or, That's what it was, it was. called. Yeah. The Wonderful World. We of used Disney. to like to watch that. It was about six o'clock at night, and I can still remember. I think it was could have been 1963, 62, mm -hmm. 61. It could have been. And they had a, it was amazing because I had pigeons at that time. And they had a, a, sh a, a, a show on 
right? wrote it about a boy in a wheelchair, right? That kept pigeons, right? Great, and, and uh, they had had racing pigeons, and he had a ramp and everything going up to his loft. The little right. boy was in a wheelchair, and I mean it, it was incredible. And what happened was. Uh, uh, three quarters of the way sh through the show, the movie, the whatever it was, right? Uh, the a cat mm -hmm. came into the pigeon uh, loft wow. and was getting in there, and the boy in the in the wheelchair, he went to ch uh, uh, chase the cat or get the cat out, and he felt this boy was in a wheelchair. He couldn't move. He was in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. stuck. He chased the cat on the wheelchair, and then for some reason he fell off over off the, the, off ramp. the ramp. I uh, watched broke, the movie. Broke through. Yeah. And he hit the ground. Right. And the boy in his mind was so eager, eager right. to get this cat out. For some reason he got up and he started to walk. It was incredible. And, and and you know, and then it shows he was training birds with his bicycle and doing right. at the yeah. end of it, you right, know. But right. it was very, very so that was, uh, good. That was very a nice. Sto story time with loft manager Richard. Yeah. <laughs> that's your, that's your right. one story that you get today. That's your one story. <laughs> no. um, I just want to get to get um, to give a shout out to everybody who's watching. We've got a whole bunch of people in the house. Thank you guys so much for watching <clears throat> on YouTube and on Facebook. Again, <clears throat> any questions you have, pigeon, pigeon related, race related. Whatever you want to ask, now's the time. Put them in the comments, and we will get to them. All right. First question of the evening, Ricky Cruz is asking, Hey, Ricky and Ryan, have a question for both of you. I have a friend that says pigeons should never eat soil, dirt, and should eat grass because they will get very sick. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I don't know who said that. I don't know. Hey, hey um, mm. you know, I, 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 the way I look at it is this. Richard, you like salad, don't you? Mm -hmm. Do you eat dirt? No, I don't. Did, did your mother tell you not to eat dirt? Or do you just don't eat dirt? I don't eat dirt. Did your mother tell you not to, or do you eat dirt? You just don't eat dirt, do you? No. I think, uh, guys... Stop thinking for the pigeons. Give them the smorgasbord. They're going to eat what they want to eat. If they want a little soil, they want a little bit of mineral, they want a little bit of this, they go and they pick. You see it in our yard here at Pioneer Village. The birds are going out. They're picking. Leah, uh, you were on today. You've seen the show. We gave the birds the greens. And it's kind of funny. The greens I picked, your Icelandic whites, were over there picking in the same greens. I looked. Over I, 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 I followed the bouncing ball and I went, yep, today that's the greens we're giving the one loft birds. Let the pigeons pick. They're not going to. I, 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 uh, I, think, I think it was Ricky that said it. Mm -hmm. The pigeons, uh, they shouldn't eat dirt. dirt. But freely putting it out there, they eat what, uh, what they think is good for them. Right. There's, there's grubs in there. There's little things in there that you and I can't see. There's ants. There's yeah. minerals. Who knows what there's in there? Okay, so so what happens? Are you going to get sick? They're going to get sick. So, Can I ask you a question? Why would they eat something that they're going to get sick from? Mike Vandriak said, my birds pick in the garden and on the lawn all the time. It is the opposite. It makes them more healthy. We know, mm. for instance, and I'm sure you guys will probably see it again this year. My mom likes to plant these nice impatience in her, uh, in the, in the back there in the flower pots. And mm -hmm. you can watch the videos from last year, the pioneer videos. <laughs> One day they were all beautiful and in bloom. And within a matter of what would you say, Ryan? One day, it was literally uh, it was literally a, a day or two. They were all picked, but you know, what the amazing thing was, the birds ate all the tops off. We covered them up. Now the tops were so bare. Leah said to me, "No shit, you guys are asses." She bought those flowers and they're ruined. We covered them. They were ruined. They were picked. Yeah, they came. They back. came back. Right. How good did they come back, Leah? And how long did they stay? Do you remember? Yeah, they stayed right till like the end of October. Yeah, um, we never just, seen that before. Oh, I'll just tell a you, side you comment for, for you, um, Richard, from Stephen on YouTube. He said that the name of that movie was The Pigeon That Worked a Miracle. If anybody knows where I can find that movie, let me know. 
<laughs> well, yeah, hundred percent. It's very hard to find. I think we have it somewhere on disc. We, I, I don't we know had where it. We put something it. had it. it. It was a real, real. It, again, yeah. it was a, it was a traditional Walt Disney. It touches but, you. But remember, anyway. I think that movie was made in 1960 <laughs> right. or 61. Well, Steven, Steven's going to send us a copy of it. <laughs> oh. Or, or he'll let us know where I can find it. <laughs> hey, if someone can get us one, that, send us that'll, one. That'll, that'll be your job. Okay, getting back to the greens. We've got a lot of comments here on the old FB that say that, um, yeah, Barbie and Gerard, they say that their birds raid their garden, love the green beans. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. Well, you know I, I know if, if you plant onions, those oh, onions, I, the onions come up about this high let, and they go out there and boy, they just clean up those onions. Listen, fun story. Or kale, put kale in your garden. Kale, Watch onions. Uh, 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 any leafy green lettuce lettuce all that stuff but here's a fun story mm -hmm. tony alvis there mm -hmm. behind him they, they grow bok choy and he had the one loft race at one point he had 14 1500 pigeons yeah he would let them out because you got to let them out to go and they, they got to be pigeons loft fly yeah not right well they were going in the bok choy field and they would eat out you know 1400 pigeons once they get in it that's it it dude <laughs> they're they're like uh they're like goats. But if you got a 50 acre field, it wouldn't be too bad. Well, they, and, and, and the, 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 the people that were farming it, they couldn't figure out. And they said to them, we don't know what's going on. Go ahead, Leah. Um, <clears throat> I'm just reading the comments here. Mandy Scar says, and patients stay as long as there's no frost. When the pigeons ate the top off, they pruned it. So it came back with two stems and grow stronger. You do that to the plants to double the stems. Well, <laughs> a good one. look at See? that. We did it and did... The can only, we didn't can even you know. bring them the, to my house? Can you bring them to my house this summer? And yeah, let yeah. Them the only, the, tru the well, only trouble well, is if you, you can't... If you wait for the double stem or whatever, the well, flowers we, to come back up, they just keep cutting them down, cutting them down. Well, we, what, we, what happened was... it, ha oh. And I'm telling you, it happened, Mandy, that past. They mowed them. They mowed them in the backyard. Get a load of this one. They mowed them in the backyard. We covered them. Yeah. You know what those we covered, them covered them bitches with, with did? Wire, with covered wire. them with wire. They moved to the front yard and, and cleaned them out in the front yard. Flower pots. Unbelievable. It was I, a move. And, God. I have a, a good recommendation by a, a, a new Pioneer member here who I, I've seen his name pop up a couple of times. And I'm just wondering if this is who I think it is. But uh, do you know somebody by the name of Mike Sheridan? Yeah, that's yeah. You know Mike Sheridan. Yeah, Bill Sheridan's son. I think yeah. I used to. I, he I, I is. Can, he it. is. He is on the page, and he is recommending Swiss chard. That the pigeons like Swiss chard. Swiss so chard. I want to give a big shout out to Mike Sheridan, who I remember going to the pigeon club as a little girl with my dad, and Mike Sheridan and I, and the Groves kids. Uh, Mike and yeah. the Groves. We all used to play at the Pigeon Club when we were very little, when our dad was oh, this. Club, so. That's got to be 40 years ago. Look yeah, at this. We're building, we're building bridges. we got to invite amazing. him down. Mike, He's got to come down. Mike's got to come down. That's, that's very nice that Mike called in. And uh, hopefully he's flying pigeons. Yeah, Mike. And if, and, if, pigeons. And, if, and if not, Mike, come on down. we got a pair of pigeons for you. Isn't that nice? Very wow, nice. that's wild. All right. Okay. Well, where's Mike now? Where's Mike? <laughs> yeah, no. Mike, if you're still what? watching, where are, you, where are you now? Now we're going to stock them. <laughs> what part of the country? Yeah. God, we're Leah, we're building bridges here. Oh, that's amazing. I just recognize yeah. the name. I'm like, could it be? I mean, maybe it's not even the same one. Who knows? We well, know maybe why. it's not the same one, but if it's Bill Sheridan's son, I knew Bill before Mike was born. Oh, uh, yeah. So Bill gave said, us Bill. He said us. He said no pigeons. But Mike, are you the Mike Sheridan? Are you Bill Sheridan's son? Let us know. He's in Keswick. Well, he has to be Bill Sheridan's son because he's Mike Sheridan. And I mean, they say parenthood is hereditary. He's, he's in. He's if, in if, Keswick. If, so am I. Hey, That's weird. They say parenthood is hereditary, and if your parents didn't have any children. You probably won't have any yourself. That's true. Hey, and as we say, Mike, you're not in Keswick. You're into the you're in the K to the R O C, Kesrock, oh. <laughs> the Wick, a fellow Keswickian. Okay, let's get back to the the fun stuff here. 
Brian Mansker is asking, Loft Manager Richard or Ryan, have you ever bred using the bull system? If so, can you explain how you did it? Okay. There's there's about three different ways you could do it. Yeah, there's multiple ways. Now, we have a pigeon we call him the seagull. When we set up this section, and, and Leah, we started it earlier, uh, that we were going to do a whole kind of a... Um, breeding session a breeding thing with them and 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 his daughter is miss san diego we put her too it, it it just hasn't worked out now we've had him in his own section and you've been playing with different hens right and uh, i can see this cock is super he really breeds good pigeons he's getting he's getting fussy now they're, they're, we're lacking something in well, the way we're breeding them. Well, now go ahead. Right. It's kind of funny. We put them with Miss San Diego. We put them with different hands, which this, is his daughter. Yeah, let's right. use just different hands. Yeah, different hands. But he was with her for a while. She wouldn't lay eggs. He seems so, to so be. So I took her out and mm. and threw her in with another cockbird, and within, I mean, he was in with her for what a month. Wouldn't lay eggs. They should drop eggs in about eight to twelve days. Twelve days is on the long side. But I took her out and I put her in with another cockbird, and sure enough, within eight days, bang, she laid her first egg. Right? Then I threw, I threw her her daughter back in, which uh, yeah. he was with last year, which he's the grand, he's the uh, the grandfather, great grandfather, whatever the story is. I threw him in with her. And she went bang. She laid eggs quickly. I moved the eggs. Yeah. Took her out. Put a new hen. I put a new hen in. You and uh, went flat. No, no, no. I put the uh, other hen, the blue bar hen, in. I put that in, and, and she, he went good with her. Switched the eggs. Took her out. I put another hen in. He was in there for three weeks. Not nah. no way. I don't know. Ah. Then I took that hen out and I put another hen no. in, and no. that hen only no. laid one egg. Now I've noticed in our section, the front is all uh, lattice right down to the to the right. floor, right? And the the cocks can come in front. I've noticed a lot of sections where guys are bullying. It's mostly always all wire, so there's a little bit of more of this. No, and well. I, I think I, I don't know. I think he's mi I think he's missing it, or he's. I mean, he is eleven years old. We I could, think we could give that a, a little bit of it. Right. But uh, the bull system, I think the secret, the big secret to the bull system is have the cocks know the hens. That's number one. Mm. But you have to keep the loft, uh, the energy up, <laughs> the cocks motivated. And that's looking at a cock beside them. I think things well, like that. But I think the bull system is good. You just have to figure out how it works so with you. I, I think this fellow is asking. Mm-hmm. What's the way to do the bull system? And I said there's about uh, two or three ways yeah. to do it, right? There's multiple ways. So you can explain to the multiple ways of doing it. Do you want me to do? Yeah, go ahead. Well, no, but th there's multiple. We we've talked about it. I think the main secrets, I think the secrets to it is you have to keep the cockbirds you don't just add hens. You have to have the cock, I think, pretty much pre-mated to them. It helps a bit. I think that's a big thing. I think another thing is keeping that cock bird motivated with other cocks. Uh, so he, he feels there's a bit of competition. I think that's a big thing. The secret in bull breeding is the cock, he plays the game. He tells the hen, we're going down on the nest. So you have to keep the cocks healthy motivated and driven those I, are the big things i almost noticed that this cock we're talking about he doesn't seem to because he's 11 for some reason he's lost the drive like huh. driving it could be okay. that could be a bit he, of it too he, 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 i watch him he, he treads the hen he takes he, he takes her into the nest pole he treads her mm -hmm. but then when it comes time to drive and that's uh people don't know what that means that means when he Push. starts he, Push. He's walk. He's pushing her. He's chasing her. Here's the seagull. He keep, here's the keep, hen. Keeps her moving. Keeps her moving. You'll even see uh, plugs, farm plugs, or you even see your own birds. Uh, if you let your old birds out, the cock will be flying uh, behind her in the sky, above her, above her, behind chasing it. her, chasing her. You see plugs do that, chasing her. Yeah, and I see that this guy. He's 11 years old. He lost that 
And um, I think the hens are getting should bored. Should be driven like the yeah. clock should drive push, her. Push, push. Yeah. Otherwise, well, it's uh, Mother Nature. It is. It's it's reproduction, right? Yeah. And, and if you guys are driving in your cars and you see two <laughs> wild pigeons flying, and you see one on top of the other like that, pushing them through the flying sky closely, closely. Yeah. That's the cock pushing the hen. He's driving the hen to nest. Go ahead, Leah. Uh, Tracy says, this is the most literal birds and bees conversation I think I've ever had. Welcome, Tracy. Welcome. Um, I want to give a shout out to Jason Mihalik. He's watching over on YouTube. I normally see you on Facebook. So when I saw your name pop up on YouTube, I'm like, oh, hi. So I want to give him a shout out. We have a question from S. Hassan on YouTube. <clears throat> he says, I noticed my friend made it up 10 pairs. All pairs somehow managed to lay all at the same time. How on earth does he accomplish this? Well, what, he, what he's done is he's had them separated enough. He's maybe either had the lights or he's waited down to where the, the, the lighting system's good. He's kept them separate. He's allowed them all to be. Now, maybe he's let them all in together. Very, every, everything's working good. Perfect storm. A little bit of luck. Bada bing, bada boom. You have a perfect drop. Yeah. Now, let's see how the hatch is. Let's see how everything is. But when, when, when you work with Mother Nature and the actual time of Mother Nature, and you have them separated, and Mother Nature's into her flow, and you're a little bit behind, and then you put them together... You get a real good drop. You move them into the into the breeding in the winter is a lot harder than right now in the spring. Right now, let me ask you something. You banded today. Now you're out there banding birds all the time. Yeah. He said to me, "Man, you wouldn't believe this. I banded a baby today. I couldn't get the band on one leg. I tried. That was unbelievable. Hold on. I ended up getting it on the other leg. How are the birds breeding for you right now? At 150 percent? Well, right now they're." Uh, Perfect. They're, everything's yeah. They're now, just right now, and right now I banded, uh, I banded roughly, let's say about one hundred and twenty-five birds. Right, one hundred twenty-five birds. Now, twenty birds. Now hold and, on. But so now you get in a situation where, you know, you get a little bit uh, what do they call it? Lazy, lackadaisical. And I went in there, for some reason I said, "Holy mackerel, that pair, beautiful pair of young ones. They're like this big. You know, they're." they're they're like holy mackerel, like bricks. Yeah, and they're they're yeah. like, <clears throat> and I'm um, going, oh, how did I miss this pair? Hold on, I went, let Leah take how it. How did away. I miss this pair? Like, you uh, you got something to say, Leah, or what? Oh no, we just got questions coming in, so I just yeah. Oh, okay, so oh, okay. anyway, Jason, so I went. Okay, so okay, you let me know when you're so, done, Dad. Yeah, so I went. <laughs> you got to get the bands. Oh no, beautiful pair of young ones, and it's a good time of the year too. Still. You can still time. band them, yeah. yeah. You got them banded. So no, yeah. So I went and got the bands, soap and, and I everything. went and got the soap, and this the the pair in the nest, the cock and the hen, right? <clears throat> All right. So I took the cock bird out, and on his right leg, I put the band on, and believe it or not, I got it only up about halfway up his right, foot, right the knuckle, the hard, part. not even up there. I got it like it was unbelievable. Yeah. And I went, and I tried to I put some soap on, and you I tried. Made, and I just tried to pull it on, and I tried to pull it on, and I got, I didn't even get it up to, right? And I got, and? you know, my T-shirt, and I got what? the soap, and all that stuff, and I started Bulls pulling, notes. and Bulls I notes. said, oh, my God. You switched I, legs. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to have, I, I mean, how, this thing's going to. You gonna, switched legs. I couldn't, I, I couldn't eliminate them. You couldn't. You were too, nice. too nice. So you, you so switched I thought, legs, I thought, and everything I was thought, good. Thought, the for, you, no, I said. For, you know what? I'm going to switch the other leg, and I said this legs. could never be. It never happened, but it never happened. happened. I switched the band on the other leg. Bam! But mind you, I did have quite a bit of work. A little bit of sweat when you're done. Yeah, okay. a little bit of sweat, and I got right. the thing on. That's two stories. No, that's it. No you're more. cut off. There's no more stories. Ricky here. Okay. Cheers. Okay. Yeah. So we have a hot question, and Jason has now switched over to Facebook mm. and is asking or is saying, uh, for the breeding, you need to have a good hen and very good eyesight, or maybe he means eye sign. Mm. Um, Henry is HF Winter. Henry is asking, how do you deal with hawks? I have already lost six birds to <coughs> hawks. Troy says, set a trap. No. Nope. What, what's, what's your thoughts on the no. hawk? Okay. Well, where no, where, where, where is Henry? I already know the inside story of Henry. Henry's out in Brampton. Okay. Ooh. Henry, before he dropped his birds off at Pioneer 
one uh, the one loft. Right. He had already said to me he had let his birds out. He let them out uh, probably what month are we in now? We're in February, March, April. We're April. April. He let them out. I think the last week of March. A little bit premature, eh? It's too early. In this area. So what I think you've slightly done, Henry. You started a feeder. You started a feeder. So what I want you to do now, I'm just gonna we're just gonna throw this out. Let's go ten days, fourteen days. Go ahead, cut them out. In. Leave them in, leave it alone. Once you teach them where McDonald's is, they don't forget where McDonald's is. Our birds stay in. We let the wild animals reproduce. The birds are back. The robins are singing. The hawk starts hitting. Hey, the other day you said it, eh? Did you see the cardinal or did you see the other bird? It went up. It was missing half its tail. Well, why was he missing half the tail, Richard? The hawk was after him. The hawk is after him. That's so what I'm thinking. I don't like to let them out till the 15th of April, although I did start letting these old birds out a week ago. Right. Okay, so I, I I don't know what the date is today. But we just had a feeling. Oh, we uh, had that feeling. I let them out, and I just see, I, I watch it. I see how the birds act. And another rule is, a little, small rule, is don't let them out until the buds are on the trees. Starting that's, to see those that's, buds. That's kind of a rule. When you start to see the trees starting to bud out, then you could start letting them out. And, uh, and, and remember, watch. if you're in Florida, you're in Arizona, you're in in, in Ireland, areas. you have to feel it out. And you know what? We've done this a long time. A lot of lost birds. We Guys, we've let out babies in February. First rounders, they're beautiful. Roll, they're big, they're ready to go out. You let them out on the board, they're ready to start to fly. The hawk comes off, scares them. They all go down to the barn and you lose them all. Scares them. They'll fly a mile, two miles because away. Because they're just full of power. They can't and fly back. They're gone. So you so got to kind of learn it. Mike Vanderyak says locking them up for 10 days will do nothing. The hawk will hit you again the first time out, and now your birds are rusty. Mm. Nope. Well, what do you think the hawk's going to do in 10 days, Mike? Do you think he just sits there? You know what? Forget 10 days. Do, uh, I'd have do to 20 ask, days. No, ask, I'm not. Ask, ask, him, ask Henry, how often did he lose hold, a bird? Hold on. Hold on. Was hold he on. losing them every other day? Hold on. Let's use common sense here. What happens when you take the feeder away? Do the birds come and sit there and peck at your window? They don't. I don't believe they do. But unless he's got a hawk that's really stubborn. Well, he's gonna if he's that stubborn, he's gonna start trying different food. And in Brampton, there's one thing I know about Brampton. There's a lot of pigeons in Brampton. Oh yeah. A lot he's of different wild. things. He's in Well, wild. okay. Uh, sorry, didn't want to mm -hmm. there's no way. There's I'm telling you, there's no way. Well, I was talking to Bill no. Wema, he's up in Guelph. Guelph in the Guelph area. And he said he had he's had his birds out. I think he said the middle of March, and he said he's had good luck, except for he had a falcon come in, and uh, and ever since that day he's had no problems. So well, you know what? Maybe Mike's right. There's a determined hawk. Just starve him out a bit. <laughs> it's okay. I, I would. That's that's my thought. Let it. Let it. And, and remember, eh? If he's determined to your place. First five days, he just starts to get hungry. He just starts to get hungry. And then he you got to push him to move. That's what I think. I That's know, my I, opinion. I know with our birds there a week or so ago, I, uh, when I let them out. That's another out story. For That's another story. Okay. I'm not, we're not ready right now. Okay. Uh, Troy says, I find it's best to let the young birds out and go out somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's 100% right. <laughs> Troy, points of the day for Troy. Great idea. The same thing when we let out the Pioneer Young Birds, Leah. Um, I'm not going to be around that day. Because why? Why add any pressure to yourself? Just let them out. Let them be pigeons. Yeah. Let them be pigeons. Same like training. When you first start <laughs> training, the worst thing you can do is race home to see how fast it came home. they got to be pigeons. Yeah. they got to play around. they got to play around. But... <clears throat> Troy yeah. gets points for that's a so, good so um, that's a good Troy's point. Tip. Henry says uh, he's losing birds every other day. I think you are right. Maybe when the buds come out, the other birds are back from migration, and the other critters are out of hibernation, and it does make sense. 
I think I heard that some of these hawks migrate. So if he's coming from south and he's moving north and all of a sudden, well, he's hit your loft and he's going, hmm, I'm going to go every other day here or every third day. I'm going to get pigeon. He's, he's forgetting about what he's supposed to be doing. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but, uh, well, we should talk. I mean, there's other people in Guelph there. If they're listening, see what experience of uh, you know what they've had you might have you now might have alan a, uh, alan says as soon as you let them out the hawk will be back now uh, the cooper hawks are opportunistic yeah. well you know what do me a favor try it for 10 to 14 days go on a vacation you know what pretend you went to the magic kingdom and take a break come oh, just take lock, break. Them, lock, take them, lock up them up take a break <clears throat> hey can i ask you a question should you keep letting them out and losing more and more or are we gonna we gonna change the bouncing ball don't, here? Don't feed him. Don't feed him. Let's see how long he can go without hunger. Now there's one type of hawk. A fellow was telling me that lives in this area, and they'll have three rounds of youngsters a year, and each uh, round is usually between three and five young ones per nest. It's called a clutch. Uh, whatever. <laughs> and and I mean, if that's a cooper or, or what do they call them? Cooper sharp shin. Or what's the other one? Uh, whatever whatever now, the names Mike, are. If, no, there's yeah. a few people. Like Mike and Alan, they feel you have to remove the hawk. But haven't you found in the past if you remove the hawk, then just another one comes? Sure. They're territorial. It's, it's a natural thing. The, the, the hawk, if we don't eliminate the hawks, I, I agree. Eliminate the hawk. Try and eliminate the hawk. That's good. But if you don't eliminate them and they keep breeding, they need their, their territory. So if you eliminate one, the other one moves in. I was right. I was talking to Les Cooper in Hamilton. Right, Jerry and Les. He said he he got a trap. Uh, Jerry brought him a gave him a trap for a gift. Right. Okay. He said he got seven hawks in one week. Seven hawks in one in week. this trap. In the trap. trap. Bang, bang, bang. In know. one week. So know. you got knock one off, another one comes. Another one comes. They move in. Mandy says that uh, Cooper Hawk here in Brighton sat right next to the loft for days, but eventually flew off after no birds out. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and the other thing, too, is please, if you get a hawk in and you trap him and he's live, don't put him in your car and drive him 100 miles and drop him off because he'll be back there in two hours. He's better than a race bird. Racing, racing hawks pioneered 2027 i know i know adolfo bianchi he's not with us anymore yeah sorry to say great pigeon flyer he said to me one day he said i got a hawk in he said i took white uh tape and i put it around his leg yeah and he drove him about 80 miles east of here stoville yeah he had to go out there visit someone Tuck him, let him go. He said he came back in the afternoon. Hawks come. The darn thing was sitting right on the landing board. So maybe we should be flying hawks and not racing. All pigeons. right. Uh, next so, year, uh, the uh, old bird will be all with hawks. Uh, Glenn, Glenn says maybe for the old birds, instead of loft flying, take them on a training toss instead and get them in the loft as soon as possible. Hey, hey yeah, you, you know what? Uh, yeah. we, we had that problem. We, we did it. Secret is in years ago. Was that maybe twenty two, years two, ago? No, two thousand and two thousand and eight or nine. We had that problem. So what we did was we we lowered the weight on the the old birds. You got to lower the weight. Lower yeah. the weight. You got to put them real. Get them almost too light. Put them on a depurito. Depurito. So lose their weight. And we were taking them two, three, four miles, and uh, it worked a bit better. Well. But I don't think it's natural. But I, I agree. It's another option. That year, we had the old birds, and we uh, it was the end of March. Yeah. Saying, hey, we got to get ready for old bird flying. Come on, guys. Let's get going here because we yeah. couldn't let them out in the winter. Yeah. The hawks would pick them off. We put them out. Say, so get out in that landing board. And the birds would turn around and, go back and just come in like crazy. So you get out there and say, little flag, come on, get up. Let's go for a fly. They'd make a half a turn around the tree, Land. hit that board, and come right back in. Because the devil. 
Yeah. Br- Brian Mansker. <laughs> ooh, he's got some fighting words here. <laughs> Let a bunch of white pigeons out 30 minutes before his bait. <laughs> Those are fighting words. Yeah. Right? It, it, no, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> I, I understand that sounds good, but why feed them? Well, yeah. You, you, and then you know what happens? You're waiting on race day, and that's happened to us as well. We, 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 never feeding. We don't feed the hawks. Let them out for, like some guys say, I got a bunch of rollers. I throw them out till one gets hit, and then I let my other birds out. Because a hawk will eat a bird, and he'll come back a day or two later. They only eat a bird, and they go two days, one day, two days. And then they'll hit another one. They don't eat birds every day. Okay? So, anyways, what was I going to say now? I don't know, but yeah, but uh, Troy Spencer remember. said that uh, his young birds have been out today uh, for three or four times. Uh, so they've been scared by Cooper Hawk two times and a red tail once. So the young birds already gained their stripes on, you know, fly or die, basically. Figure it out, I guess. That's his yeah, theory yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's right. And, and it's the same with those. Today I had the old birds out and there was a, uh, two ospreys flying over to the lake yeah and all they hunt is fish but they were making their sound you know that ee and whatever they were flying over and the old birds just freaked right out they were just they thought oh we're target um s hassan on youtube says i guess he's in hamilton he says hamilton is absolute worst they have a huge community who monitors them daily flying in hamilton is close to impossible i believe it because that's on the niagara escarpment Right. And you've got, you know, those bluffs and whatever you call yeah, them. Yeah, the yeah. hawks like to make sense. The great hawk debate. <laughs> and today was a hawk day. Try and outsmart them or eliminate them. Well, know. hey, you know well, what? You know what's lucky at the Pioneer One Loft? Our clock's not here yet. So naturally, Mother Nature is looking out for me. Yeah, exactly. Maybe <laughs> there's, there's a reason it's uh, been delayed by DHL in transit. Okay, no questions, um, Ryan. Anything else you'd like to mention? You know, I, I'd like to go back to the fellow that asked about bullying and uh, bullying you talk. Hold now. on, but you can bu- you can put a cock in with a hen and let him mate up and let her drop the eggs and have another pair uh, pumpers that are ready to take those plant it all together. So you put those the pumpers together and the the cock with that hen together. And then soon she lays those eggs. You take the eggs away and put her with the pumper and then take that hen away and then put another hen with them. But it's good if you can mate that cock to whatever hens you want him to bull with when the mating season comes. So if you want to mate him up with four or five hens, do that in the fall. Put him in there put her in there with him for let's say a day or an afternoon you'll see how she is she mates up with him take her away wait a day or two put another hen in let him mate with her take her away like you don't want to get them so they get into the uh the leg, whole leg a uh, laying yeah. stage and take that away right so then when it comes mating time right he knows those four hens are his girlfriends. He knows them all. He the likes hens. Them. Yeah, he likes them. The hens know him, and that you can do that with twenty hens. Twenty hens, right? right? So now, if you go, let's say, with twenty hens, you better have your switchers ready. Your switchers, switchers ready, or you can have boxes for each hen with nesting material in in her own box. That's tricky. And put, it gets trickier. Yeah, no, yeah so I'm just saying different methods of yeah, doing it, right? It gets, that's, that's super true. I right. mean, you got to be retired. You got to be. Well, is there retired? anybody on here now that uses that method? Or use a, there's a few methods here yeah. we can use. The other thing, the other thing was uh, today on uh, I was feeding the greens and uh, Tony there, Carloft. He asked about the darkening. Can you start darkening and mate? Yes, you can. Remember, the bird's got to have about 8 to 10 hours of daylight when you darken. And you want to do it about 10 to 12 weeks, you know, about 10 good weeks. Did we not start darkening last year in May? 
Yeah. Well, we're, darkening is going to start. Darkening. I started uh, no, at the you, beginning of we have birds and, uh, are, March. We have birds that are already in the dark. Right. No, but I'm saying but, uh, last year, our pioneer birds, you didn't start darkening until May. Yeah, pretty much. Well, because we had a one-week window, the birds that came in, we started darkening around May the 9th, May the 14th, yeah. started to darken. Right. And, it worked. It worked fine. And it, and it worked. Now, hey, hold on. I'm, I am day May, uh, June 1st. I'm in the dark. Right. It turns out to be 100 degrees. She's hot. She's humid. She's muggy. It's okay. One day, a little <laughs> bit warm, we take them to... We take them to new 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning, open the windows, let them get some air. Let everything keep rolling good. You want to know why? You're not going to trigger it. You adjust a little bit with the weather if you're darkening. But that's how, what we how, do. A lot of people say, well, how dark should it be? And I'm just going to try a little experiment in here right now. Well, he's going to show I've dark. darkened bird in here. Just give me one second here. Richard's going to show you, I think, and this is exactly what he's saying. Yeah. And I'm going to keep waving my hand, and you know, you're going to see it. Dark doesn't mean black. It means, hey, I can walk in my house. I don't stub my toe. I could maybe even read a newspaper. Look, can you see my hand? There's darkening. Okay. This is what darkening that's, is. That's, uh, that's almost dark. Watch, we're going to shut it right down. Okay. That's pitch dark. That's too dark. Well, well, in here on the camera, it is. Put the lights back on now. This here is pitch black. Okay. Put the lights so back here. on, Dad. Put the lights on now, please. Now, you see, even almost here, this is brighter than it was. Boom, the lights come on. So you want to be able, you want to be able to walk through your lot. You don't trip over things. You can almost read your debit card, <laughs> you know. That's what you're looking for. It doesn't have to be pitch black, please. If it's pitch black, that means there's no air getting through. You need air. The secret in darkening is oxygen. Without oxygen, you're going to gum the birds up. You're going to have sickness. You're going to have more problems. And if you are darkening in June, and there's a day where she's, you've been darkening, you're religious every day. They got eight and a half hours of daylight you're, you're religious you're on a schedule and there's a day where she's a hundred degrees and she's hot and humid it's okay open the windows up a bit early that day you're not going to trigger anything yeah exactly um s hassan on youtube is asking um, how to prevent that. hens from laying or pairing up in their separation pen how to keep hens read it again how to keep hens how to prevent hens from laying or pairing up in their separation pen. Is that when he has well, all the hens together? Yeah. Or like, is that... So first thing is you don't want, what I say, you don't want box purchase like I have in the Pioneer Loft. You want pull purchase, V purchase, you know, uh, ladder purchase, something along those lines. Now, when guys are flying just hens, they have the hens either locked up in a box. I've seen guys even put, uh, Leah, you know, um, you know, you go to the, the, the store and they, they sell the kids little, little cheapy balls. They fill the section with balls so the hens can't go down and queer up in the corners. But what you really want to do is keep the hens from going in any type of a box perch, a V perch, a pole perch, uh, those little, uh, you know, the tall perches with the, just the little stumps that come out that kind of keeps the hens from wanting to pair up. If you have a box perch, the hens or the cocks, they eventually will coax and they pair up. So that's, you know, that's how it is. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay, Mike Vandriak is a little whole bunch here. Mm. Not now. At the end. Um, no, not. Shall I read what this? I'll read it. Okay. All right. Uh, Mike just wrote, mate the pairs, but leave the hen locked on one side of the nest where her mate can't get to her. Put the hen into a section alone with the bullcock once a day. She will lay in 10 days, and in the morning, 
she is due to lay the second egg, open the box, and let her cock in with her. Yep. I'll set the eggs and raise the babies. I did it with six hens and got 11 babies off the one bull. Yeah, super way. Good way. Yeah, and, and that's right. That That's another way of doing it. And it Glenn, works. Glenn says, all natural here. I had a four-year-old cock today that finally paired up with a hen. Up until now, he remained single. <laughs> He's uh, being both sick and hawked. Uh, only has one eye from the hawk attack last year. It's a good day, but better for him. Ah, oh, congratulations. That's awesome, Glenn. So he was like four years? Four years. Hey, we had uh, we had a cockbird that we bought from Dean Pallet. And uh, quick story. We had him uh, five years. He didn't lay. He didn't drive. He didn't do nothing. Wouldn't we mate. Wouldn't mate. Wouldn't do nothing. We switched a section. First pair of babies came out the pigeon we talked about the seagull the seagull has bred supers that cock bred good after that he never had a bad day after it it took him uh, almost five years to do it mike vanriak has a good suggestion uh to stop hens from laying feed them a half ounce of barley mm -hmm. a day give them a good meal on the weekend and they won't lay yeah that, that that that's taking them um, it, it's to purifying them right it's same like your your, your race birds when you depurify them, you take the energy out. You take the the zip out of the bird. Feeding is another thing, but overall, overall, we do quarantine. I'll quarantine two or three hundred pigeons. Sometimes they're all race birds. With the perches that we have, we have no laying even on the floor. There's no balls. There's no nothing. They don't lay. There's no nest material. The perches. Yeah, ever. The perches. Ever. Ever the perches take the the motivation out that where is there to go? Now I have cocks that coo and go back and forth, and I've learned in quarantine pigeons are socks. They're babies. Mm -hmm. They love their mates. I'd rather have them sit beside their 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 pair that they paired up with in Holland. They just sit beside them. I've been to animal to fly quarantine. It's the same way. Pole perches, no mating, no problems, nothing. And Literally, why, if, why do you feel ahead. it's important to leave them together? You say the sulking because if when they start Harmony. to sulk, when they Harmony. start to sulk, they get depressed. People who get depressed, mm -hmm. just like people, you, sickness can crawl on you. You add to that mm -hmm. the stress of the transport, the this, the that, the other thing. It makes sense, doesn't it? Why well, add one more the, thing to their plate? The same as I believe in, in race birds at the end of the season or. Uh, end of breeding or whatever to have a good molt keep those pairs together until Just they get the the, all those flights out because if you separate them and, and separate them uh, maybe the first of December once their molts come through you separate them in October or well, September you know what and what happens is they so you know you know we did an, we did uh, two auctions for Mark Codwell very successful flyer in the UK right he doesn't separate his breeders uh -huh. until December 1st. That's he what pairs I them up. He said, I pair them up January 1st. I go, well, why? You know what he said? I like to keep the loft in good spirits. That's right. <laughs> that's what he says. That's what that's what I was just saying. Because, and that's what you're because saying. Because they get depressed. Uh, but like Mike, Mike Vanderjack says, you can adjust the feed. You can adjust the purchase. Hey, if you're in your loft, you have all your box perches? Close them all up. Put your pole perches in. Put pole perches. Let them. Let the cock and the hen sit beside each other. There's nowhere for them to go and have a nest. Normally, you don't have a problem. We don't have any problems in quarantine. <laughs> Literally, well, no eggs. Would I? Would I? Uh, think a good idea is too is may sound stupid. But if you've got a wire mesh floor or something, you can close your boxes off, put pole perches up for yeah. individual perches, and you get a buck rabbit. No, <laughs> and put them on the floor of your loft, and he'll keep them out. He, of the he'll corners. keep them out of the corners. Keep them off the floor. Keep all that right. <clears throat> Take the rabbit out when you feed them on the floor. Feed and water them. Take the rabbit out. 
You uh, have a lot, put a lot. the rabbit in, and that's it. There and you they go. won't fool There's around it. on the floor. They won't go in the corners. Hey, oh, and by the does, way. Does anybody use the rabbit trick? I'm interested to know. Listen, if you want to see a, a real guy Can flying we do that? Hands, go, go look on our YouTube Dude. channel at uh, White Pigeon Lofts. He's got the rollers. You know the rollers, Leah, from A&P? Yep. He's yep. got those in the loft. The, the hens, rollers on the floor. Yeah, the yep. hens touch them. They just roll. Can't go anywhere. But anyways, uh, there's a few tips. They'll work. Can we get the rabbit for your loft? No, there's no rabbit for you. Give me okay. another question, Leah. Uh, Joseph says, hello from North Carolina. Good evening, everyone. What's better, plastic or metal to keep your feet in? Now, you're talking about storage? Metal. Plastic or metal? I think he's, he must be talking about storage. Storage, not to feed them in, right? Oh, I don't know. I don't if, know. if you're talking about storage, storage, I, I, I would. Our, our, I would. I would think probably plastic. I don't know. I don't we, know. We keep our feet in the bags that we get it in. Uh, or if you're putting on plastic, make sure maybe you put it on a skid so you got air underneath. Don't put it out on the ground because you get humidity, heat coming off the ground. Then you get moisture in the bottom of it. Same as metal. Uh, make sure it's got to breathe, right? Let air. Well, you guys feet. keep. Yeah. Okay, this is a better question. <laughs> you guys keep your feed just in the bags that the, that the feed comes in, correct? Yeah. Okay, so everybody in the comments, put how do you guys store your feed? There you go. Then maybe we'll yeah. take a little poll. <laughs> Mandy, Leah Arf. wants a bunny. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll take a bunny. Okay. She <laughs> wants. Wait, wait. What are those ones with the long hair? What are they called? Oh, the, the, the Angora. The, are they Angora, Angora, yeah. Rabbits, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Those are beautiful. But They're then nice. you got to get them a haircut now with this COVID. You can't get them the hair done on them. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, anyways, the bag feed, it's got uh, the Versalaga, it's got uh, what, four membranes? Yeah. Right? So it's the got bag it's, it, it, Yeah. And uh, then the reindeer corn. Uh, we keep that in the, we keep that in the plastic barrel and the barrels, results are and, the, and we got the barrels off the ground yeah we, we on, see we on, keep on skids on skids so, so our, our feeds off the ground about this high so the air can move around right we've put these plastic barrels with the reindeer corn right on the ground mm -hmm. and we found that the bottom uh probably inch and a half and yeah, it gets wet soaked with moisture moisture once you put it, gets, it up once you put it up on the skid the barrel breathes and uh Bob's your uncle. So Mike Vandriak says feed should be stored in paper or wood, never plastic or metal. He uses paper barrels. Glenn Thornley says plastic garbage can holds two bags. Ricky okay. Cruz says metal bin stays fresh so far for him. So. <laughs> and hey, you want to know what the great thing is? There's lots of ways to bake a cake. I think what Mike's saying mm -hmm. is uh, uh, I like a really good idea because if the if the feed has heat in it. Like if there's any way that heat, mm -hmm. let's say you've got it in a room and heat penetrates, the feed will hold heat. And then if you have it in a plastic barrel, the heat hits the cold plastic. It and sweats. then you get a, va you get a vapor Ooh. thing. Whereas <laughs> Mike, if you have it in a wooden uh, unit, <clears throat> the wood will absorb any vapor coming off the heat from the feed. Mike Sheridan says that his dad always used to use paper barrels up off of the ground. Hold on. We, yeah, have a problem. we have a real issue here with Mike Sheridan. Yeah. There's an issue right now. I think Mike, Mike Sheridan. Mike. What's your dad's name? <laughs> no, he said his. Uh, oh, Bill Sheridan. Bill Sheridan. I didn't Sheridan. know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it. Mikey's back in. Wait, Mike, when are you coming down? You're in Keswick? Hope okay. you like a little bit of okay. war paint. Okay, so <laughs> what Nick, what I think it was Nick said about the principal or his teacher, mm -hmm. or whatever, about bringing him back to good feeling about pigeons. Right. I think we've just heard from Mike Sheridan, which uh, he's 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 got some kind of good feeling about this. Okay, and I want to show you a picture. Oh boy! Of you went in the house, Leah. This is good feeling. Well, let me move it up to the camera. I don't camera. know if you can see it, but when I look at this picture, all of us can say, can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we are all pigeon keepers. And that's a very good feeling. The man in that picture, it's not a racing pigeon man, but he's got a feeling to keep pigeons. By the way, 
He's not a racing pigeon man. You know what he is? He's a pigeon man. That's right. That's what he is. Could you see that picture there or no? That's a great picture. Yes, and, we all saw he, the picture. He, he, he always brings the picture back out, and that's what it's about. It's about enjoying. And, guys, you don't have to be a racing pigeon guy to be on here. We want you to enjoy it. Mike, um, when are you coming down? Yeah. The offer has been extended, Mike. Ryan wants you down there. Um, Ampar Loft, Troy, says that he has feed in a metal garage can outside, but the lid let air in from under the rim. <coughs> where do you good. get those where do you get those paper barrels? Is that like um uh, no, I see. I don't know where you get them, but I, I've, I've seen them. There, there are a lot of food places. Yeah, like the they used to use them at the bulk barn or they might still use them at the bulk barn or they put the dry Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Well, and I think that's why Versalaga has the membranes, so many membranes. It, 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 it's a good bag. It really is. It, it allows the bag to breathe. It allows the, it to separate from the, the grain from the bag. You know, it, it's good. Anyways, move oh, on. So, so we've had the hawk debate. We've had the great uh, storage debate. <laughs> um, you want to do housekeeping? You want to talk about the band race? Anything you want to talk about or the old birds or, <laughs> or anything else? Okay, band race. I want people to understand something with the Pioneer Band Race. We got uh, 1,600 rings sold. We've got almost 100. You're going to have about 140, maybe 120 bands yourself. Yourself. Right. You're flying. He's participating. Guys, I don't want to hear about drag. I don't want to make excuses. You all have an opportunity to purchase the rings. There is no limit. Tony Elvis, he has over 100 rings purchased. Mike Van Kempen will be flying about 100. Dan Horner will have 50. Bill Wiemann will have 50. Please, there's still time. The birds are not too late. There's no problems. I don't want you, and I don't want to hear, they bought this amount. They bought this amount. Stop making excuses. Done. If you if I hear an excuse, you're going to get Jimmy, and Jimmy will call you out because we're not making excuses. If you can do it with under ten pigeons, you are a wizard. But hey, do not knock the man who buys 140. Do not knock the man who buys 50. Don't knock them. They're adding money for you to take if you are that good. It depends on. On what kind of, uh, of a pigeon keeper you are and what kind of, I have to say, a coach of your team to regulate can I ask the you, training. Can I ask you a question? Uh, I see, I'm going to ask you a question. I've seen, I I seen ask, guys in Europe who uh, buy with 300 stop. birds a week. Stop. Against the guy stop. with 30. Stop. The guy with 30 blows them away. Can I ask you a question? You buy 10 bands. You feel good. You got 10. Right. Okay. You raise your babies. You band them. You let them out. Hey, the guy in Guelph, Henry, Hawk took three. You're out. You start training. You lose two. You didn't even go to 100 miles, and you're down two. So now what are you down to? You're down to what, six? You go 100 miles, 150, 200 miles, it's a foggy day. They lose. You're down now to four. You're going to take four pigeons, go four weeks at 300 miles. Hey, do me a favor. Any guy that wins... With under 10 pigeons, the average speed in a champion bird, I give you $2,000 for the bird. Because you want to know what? It takes a monster pigeon to do it. In reality, you need bullets in your gun. And the guy with the bullets is the guy who's going to do it. So if you have 10 bands, you're breeding babies still now. We know you're into it. Get yourself another 10. Get 20 birds. Give yourself a little bit of an army to go to battle. It's common sense. Mike Sheridan says it takes one to win. It does only take one to win. Hey, hey Mike, it takes it takes one to win. It takes one to win. It takes one to win one race. Mike, we're talking average speed in four weeks at four 300-mile races. Now, I know one thing. That's one hell of a tough challenge. He, the bird can do it. Uh, the first race can do it. Uh, 
And then you've got to start thinking. He'll come back on race two and do it. He's going to come back two and do it. He may be able to do it. Race three is a ball burner, and he's a little bit late. In race four, the the tank is cooked. He's cooked. Unless you're a wizard and bringing him back. And you want to know what? Ladies and gentlemen, let's not forget. You have to ship on Thursdays. All four weeks is shipped on Thursdays. So that means they come home on, on Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they go back down the road. And hell, if we have a rainy day, they come home on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four days to recoup. So you think about it. You need a little bit of an army to do it. And and I'm, I, we're trying to help you out because I don't want people complaining and saying, Tony has 100. He has 60. He has 40. I have 10. You put yourself in that situation. Don't blame your birds. <clears throat> um, okay, so we've got a, a statement from Mike about the bags. And Antonio on YouTube is asking, I'll, Mike, I'll get to your statement in a minute. Antonio says, why is it so hard to get good white grizzly pigeons? And are you guys going to have any auctions anytime soon? Good yeah. white grizzles. Okay, well here here's the first thing. It's this is a fun thing. You say grizzle, you say red, you say gay pied, and ninety percent of the so called pigeon men, what do they do? Turn it oh the hawks eat them. Oh, oh, they're dumb. They're not. People don't give it a chance. Give it a chance. Sonia Vandermelen from Belgium. She lives off the grizzles and the pites. She wins. She gives it a chance. Peter Vrais. Peter Vrais gives it a chance. The Ludoclossum birds gives it a chance. <clears throat> what people do is they get themselves into that little box. And they believe that only blues and checkers will win. If you have a loft of blues and checkers, you should win every week. If you have a loft of blues and checkers, the hawk shouldn't hit you. You want to know what? Get outside the box. Think a little bit. <coughs> last, There's good and all. Last year, it started off with 45 young ones. Right. I had six Icelandic whites in there. In pure, the team. Pure whites in that team. Okay. Mm -hmm. I ended up, by the end of the year, they flew nine races. Nine. Back to back. Mm -hmm. They were in good shape. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't put a pigeon out there unless he's in good shape. Right. I ended up with 27 left at the end of the season right out of the six right six whites i had three left so can i ask you a question so, okay can i ask you so, a question so that means did your whites compete that, on a fair level or better good on, on a fair level fair level fair level fair level yeah maybe you didn't win the races so, they, they so I, I dropped three mm -hmm. You did good with those whites. So, so, so that means there's uh, there was uh, but, 20, but, 23 blues and checkers left. But I notice when people out of forty five. But I notice when people get colored pigeons, they start to make excuses and right away when they get them. Out of thirty nine. Thirty nine. You did better with the whites. I'm gonna be sorry well, to say you, this. If you look at okay. it. Uh, yeah. But right. but what I'm saying is people make excuses, excuses, excuses. Oh, it's a white. The hawk's gonna eat it. Oh, it's a white. It can't do it. You want to know what? You look at one loft races and take the first 20 pigeons. There's always a grizzle, a rat, a pie. They're always in there. They're there. You know what? And you know what? A, a, a prime handled. example A prime example is going to be the Pioneer Youngbird because we, at the moment, have half and half. Yeah. Half of the pigeons are colored. That means they got white, red, mealy, whatever. They're blue bar, white plates, checker pies, mealy pies, reds, blood reds, blacks, grizzles, and whites. 50% of our loft, 50% of it is colored. So that would mean if people in looking the pioneer, in, in the Pioneer. And the other half is blues and checkers. You want to know what? The pines and the colors are going to do just fine. Uh, it's people. Who, what color that ruin won it. the trapping challenge yesterday? By oh, the way. Hey, you, know, you know what won the trapping challenge? It was a wolfie's. Oh, a crappy mealy. Go wait, figure. Wait, go <laughs> figure. And wait a minute. The bird on the on the on the on the red wings. Mm -hmm. Guess what color that was? A blue white flight. Crappy. The hawk should have eaten it too. <laughs> so the blues and the checkers. Boom 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 boom. 
they're down. Yeah, colors, one, blues and checkers, zero. <laughs> I think if you're going to buy uh, grizzles, whites, reds, basically any any color you buy, make sure it's off a of good breeding. Yeah, or, I, I or, mean, or, 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 do, or do, your, do your homework. If you want good grizzles, go out and find me. Hey, can I ask you? You you want a certain something, a certain steak, a certain shoe, a certain dress or a coat. You want it from a certain designer. You go and buy it. You don't just go down and say, "Oh, well, Mike, he's got uh, he's got whites. He doesn't fly them. He just lets them out and off flies." That's not what you add. I, I, go and talking, buy the best you can you're buy. Talking about white pigeons. I know guys that say I have them. I use them for weddings. I only take them 25 miles away. That's would you, all I Would do. you try those? So basic, No. Basically, all they're keeping is a bunch of show pigeons. Okay? Right. Now, I had guys come in here and say, we want to buy some of your whites. Right? I brought them out, and they say, they're oh, too small. These things are way too small. They're like, ro they're like robins. They got no weight. They got no, uh, you know what? They're not the Trentons. You don't want some tank. Right. You want right. buoyancy. You want to move. Hey. We wanted black pigeons, and I remember it. I was a little, I was young. I think I was 14. We went to the Chris Peeman sale. We bought the black velvet pigeons. Yeah. We bred them. We were no good pigeon flyers, were we? No. We, we enjoyed pigeons. We were busy. I played soccer. Mm. How good did the blacks do for us? They were good. We flew them right out to Pickle Lake. We oh, still had far, them. How far is that again? That's th 700 miles. Yeah. Anyway, getting back to Antonio's question. Uh, yes, coming up season four, Sonia Vandermalen from Belgium. She will be back. Uh, Peter Vrays will be back with the Ludo Klassens. Um, I know Ross Vaccaro, he, he has quite a few grizzles. And he is a local. Um, I'm not sure where you're located, Antonio, but he's local in Canada. Uh, Ross Vaccaro, yeah, he ships Canada to the States. Yeah. Yeah, he's got some nice grizzles. If you're looking yeah, for absolutely. grizzles. So, you know, they are out there. They will be coming. Um, season four, our auctions start again up in October. And I know those two, are, for a fact, will be uh, bringing birds to sell at auction. So, where did Ryan go? So, Ryan went, stepped out for about a second. Oh, that's And he'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> now he's back now. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, you gotta fly those birds. You can't. Uh, you can't. You can't stop them. You can't. You can't say, "Well, I like that one there." Let's say the fella gets a nice pair of grizzles, and maybe he paid a few dollars for them, and now he's got a pair of young ones off him, and he says, "Oh no, you know, I'm just gonna train them. I don't want to lose them. I'm only gonna take them to 100 miles because, geez, if I lose them, or he takes them to 150 miles and." They come later, come the next day or something, and he goes, oh, I'm going to stock them. I, I don't do that. Matthew is asking if the BST is still on for May the 9th. I think at the moment yeah. we're going to put it on hold and hopefully reschedule to the May 2 for a long weekend. Right, Ryan? Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. I think we're going to do that. Um, but as far as the Pioneer Young Birds, Ryan, you still want them on yeah the ninth. you, you gotta have them may by the night on or yeah. before may 9th yeah we're, we're gonna close it off on may 9th I, I'm, I'm really i'm being serious this year i, I don't want to start taking birds may 14th 15th 17th you've had or june 1st yeah no you've had long enough to follow the bouncing ball you either are in or you're out may the 9th is the last day there's no more birds coming in after may the 9th so get them here. And it's the same with you with your Pioneer Band Race. Get your birds here by May the 9th. We're done. You know, I, 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 there gets to a point where I'm sick and tired. Well, no, it, but it's just you're um, putting them, yeah. you know, we all have well, to start I, getting on the same program, right? Right. And that's what we're yeah. trying to do. And if the birds come later and later, it sets back the training progress of the loft as a whole. Right. And you, as the guy that brings them on May 18th or 24th or June the 1st, your birds aren't going to make it. They're going to fall off the wagon. And you know what you're going to say? We're shit. We're not. we got to start law flying. 
uh, birds, yeah. There's a program. Get, There's get a program. Together. So May the and, 9th is the cutoff. Antonio's in Massachusetts. So uh, as far as if you're looking for, like, local guys or guys in North America that have nice grizzles or colored, like we said, Ross Vaccaro <laughs> is one. Who Do you know anybody in the States or in? That, you're, that, that oh. just kind of has the nice colored or the grizzles or anybody here? I, I we can ship to the States. Think, but... Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Look know, for performance. Look, look for nice performance. I, I don't know. Again, it, it's not a it's not a big thing, and a lot of people poo poo it, and I don't know why, but they do. Well, well, I, I'm interested to see this year how our colored birds are going to do versus the blues and the checks and the pioneer young birds. So, for those right. of you that have sent colored, awesome. I look forward to seeing how that goes. Yeah. Um, also, I think you wanted to mention that the Montreal birds. There was some question as to when they were coming down. I think handlers are wondering when Dorian's going to get that large group because we've got about 240, right, coming from Montreal. Yeah, they're coming at the end of the month where we're going to work it out because we're not supposed to be crossing the, I guess, the Quebec border or whatever. But we're working on that. They're, they will come over if we have to put them on WestJet. Whatever we have to do, we will get them. So they block the border off from Quebec to well, they're, Ontario. They're saying that. So we're just going to work that out. And there's not going to be a problem. The birds will be here. So we'll, you're going to we'll get them here. The handlers. I know Troy's handling. Mike Van Kempen's handling. The birds will be here at the end of the month. By the end of the month. Uh, and that's that. On that note. Yeah. Old birds. When's the loft coming? Do we have a date for that? Hold on. I want to I want to look at my It should, should be here by June. No, it's going to be here. <laughs> middle, of, middle of May or June. Middle of May or June. Uh, the loft's on its way. No problems there. We've got uh, a lot of fun. We're, when hoping... are we accepting to start to accepting uh, the old birds? June 13th. Uh, 13th, 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 right? 13th. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll have that all done. Uh, oh, <laughs> hey, Ricky Cruz says that he can pick them up from Montreal. Really? So he's Look coming this. back. You see this? This is, this is what we open the world up to. All right, Ricky. Ricky, Ricky Cruz is a transport driver. Yeah, That's he right. drives through there a lot. Yeah. I think on his way back and forth, right? Yeah. Ooh. So we'll uh, we'll we'll get in touch with you, Ricky, on that. And uh, Thank I you, mean, again, Ricky, that's uh, that's uh, awesome. very nice. Yeah, we very can nice. even we can even look we can even give Ricky the crates. And uh, well, no, you can't give him the crates because he's probably going back going that way with a load. Or, or yeah, or maybe he can take them. We don't know. We haven't talked. Yeah, we have to talk. Uh, to him. How do yeah. we know? Very nice. Um, Joseph is asking, "What about uh, from the U.S. young birds? When are we going, Ryan?" Uh, I'm hoping the end of this this month, uh, the end of this month or the first week of May. I'm hoping. I mean, there's no guarantees. If we don't have birds, we just don't go. You know, uh, it, it really depends. I, got, I have to have birds going down to the U.S. Hey, guys, you want to send birds to the Peach Classic? 300,000, let me know. I, I want I want to send birds, but if I don't have enough birds to go down, I'm not going. And I'm not going through other people to send the birds because I know how it goes, and it's com capital S-H-I-T. It's shit. So, so the I'm not plan doing is, it. The plan was end of April, beginning of May. Right. And uh, we're going to try for that. Mm-hmm. So oh, uh, Ricky says that he's going to be in Montreal tonight. Well, okay, maybe not tonight, but I think Dorian said his birds are ready at the end of the month. Yeah, he's he's got to get everybody to to together because they're all over Montreal, and he's doing the pickup, and he he's organized it. But uh, Ricky, if I kind of know your schedule and when you're going to be down there, I, we can probably put it together so uh, it's quite easy. Uh, Steven from YouTube says that he loves these shows. Always learn something new. Thank you. You're very welcome. Antonio from YouTube says that uh, he'll be following the races. Awesome. We look forward to having you as Hold. part of the Pioneer family. Go ahead, Ryan. Hold on. Steven and Antonio, you're not just going to follow the Pioneer. You're going to participate in it. Stick with us, watch the shows, and you will find out there is a way that you guys can pick your favorites and participate. We have claimers coming. We have a lot of different fun-filled events. You may not have birds here, but you can own birds here. Just, just ask Joseph. Ask Jay-Z. Joseph, how much money did you win last year 
in our Young Bird series, and you didn't even have your own bird in the race. We should actually ban Joseph and just let him play the pick birds. <laughs> Could you imagine when Joseph gets into the claimers? I, I the feel fantasy like he won like seven or eight thousand dollars last year. Just Joseph and, and, and it was the first. The funny thing was with Joseph was whenever there was a happy hour on, he was so happy, he just picked the damn winner. He won that kind of money. Joseph, Joseph, I need a break job on my Dodge pickup truck. Joseph owes me a steak dinner. He, he was winning like a machine. Okay. Who, well, wait, who, who else is there? there uh, the other fella. Uh, Hold on. Many ways to play, and we try and get it so everybody can be involved. Everybody who wants to be involved. So, not to worry. All right. Not to worry. We're going to wrap it up. You know what? It was a fun Sunday night. Hopefully, you guys learned a bit. We talked about it. Um, store your feed. The secret to all feed storage is it's keep not, it dry. <laughs> not these That's, guys learning. It's we learned. I actually learned Good. something tonight. Remember? Well, that, that's why we're doing it. So we're colored all pigeons, together. Colored pigeons can win. They will win. Our best pigeons that have ever won us money have always had war paint on them. Never won with a blue or a checker, nor will I don't think I ever will. We thank you guys for your support on YouTube, on Facebook. What do we ask? Share. Don't just share this page. Share the page to all your pages. Share your pages to your friend, person you see at the coffee shop, your neighbor. Share it. Look, Sharing it works. Is a big it, word. it worked for Nick. It worked for Nick. He got That's now right. his principal interested, involved, coming for a visit, falling in love again with the pigeons. You never know, guys. Show him the so picture. That's a good feeling. Don't be shy and share. That's how we grow. Yeah, here we go. We'll end we go. on showing the picture. There we go, Dad. There There's the go. picture, guys. You guys have been a wonder. can see it. No, but yes, they can see we it. We can all see that's, it. That's a Ricky, good feeling. Ricky, Ricky, you can see it. Guys, good feeling. Good we job. do want to thank you, Richard, Leah, myself. Enjoy those pigeons. Share, share, share.